more humble. How do we become more humble? Number one, number one, number one. Be a listener. Yes. See, see, a humble leader, and we're all leaders in this room, a humble leader listens to what the other person is saying. Huh, what a concept. Amen. To be a listener. Not to always have to be the talker. Not to always have to be the one who's got the most to say in the room. This is for me. I don't know if you all get this. I think God put this on here for me. It says, be a listener, Georgia. It says, listen to what the other person is saying. James 1 and 19 says, be quick to hear and what? Slow to speak. Quick to hear and slow to speak. We ought to be listening twice as much as we are what? Number two, be a learner. A humble leader is one that can receive new information and then modify and make changes. New information. Non-humble leaders refuse new information, but a humble leader will understand something new and then move and change and adapt. Proverbs 9 and 9 says, give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser because a wise person receives new information and processes it. Amen, that's what you gotta do to be a leader in these day and times, come on. You can't pivot in your business, you can't pivot in your home life, you can't pivot in your school life. Come on somebody, if you don't receive new information, all the people that didn't learn anything during the pandemic are in trouble. Amen. I don't hear amen out there loud enough. That's the truth right there. Hey, 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 all, all, all the churches, all the Christian folk, we had, to, we had to quickly figure out how to have church without being in a building. Come on, somebody. You had to quickly do it or else you're going to get left in the dust. All right, number three, be reflective. Mm -mm -mm. Examine yourself and, 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 and check yourself against the language of pride. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Am I being prideful? Is my pride talking out of my mouth? Is my pride operating through my actions? Is there pride in my mind so that I have a prideful attitude towards other people? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Mm, that's, that's an ouch right there, isn't it? Examine yourselves. In other words, we need to be unafraid to look on the inside. See, a non-humble leader has no self-examination skills. See, we need to be able to look inside and see if there's some mess in there. We need to be able to look inside and see if there's some confusion in there. We need to look inside and see, is there greed in there? Is there lust in there? Is there one of the seven deadly sins? That's our Bible study on Thursday nights. Seven deadly sins. Is there one of those inside? You got to be reflective. Uh, number four, be willing to admit mistakes. I mean, that's powerful right there. Be willing to admit mistakes. And, 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 and I'm going to say this in, in, in the language of, of one of the pastors. Uh, well, he used to be at Life Church Southfield. Now he's pastoring uh, his own, he's pastoring a church now, Messiah uh, Evangelical Covenant Church. And he would say, if I put it in his language, he likes, he, he, he likes um, uh, admit apologize, and then apply the medicine to the wound. What does that mean? It means first admit whatever it is you did wrong. Admit your mistake. Apologize for it. Apologize for it, and then apply the medicine to the wound. In other words, you need to then figure out the thing that's in you that made you do that untoward thing. You need to learn something about that. Is it some deep-seated fear from my childhood? Is it some brokenness that I have because somebody spoke badly about me? I've already told you all so much that I was quick to have a, a verbal retort for people because when I was younger, I was teased a lot. I told you all that I was teased because I was skinny and I was teased because I wore orthopedic shoes and I was teased because I sucked my thumb and I was teased because my name was Georgia. Now, why that was a subject of teasing, I don't know. But I had more George, George, George of the Jungle songs sung in my presence. Uh, so, 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 and then there was, I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill, but they put in Georgia instead of Blueberry Hill, right? So there were all kind of songs about me, and I was always being teased. I was always being teased, and so I developed the ability to quickly respond with a verbal retort. I always had something to say. You say something to me, I'm going to come right back at you. Oh, you think I'm skinny? Well, I think you're something else. And you got something to say about my shoes? Well, I got something to say about you. And so that was a terrible thing that I developed, and the only way I could deal with it, come on, somebody, is to be able to look on the inside. Huh, look on the inside and discover, is there something in there that needs to what? Come out. 
And then finally, and finally, and finally, oh, and the scripture on that, Proverbs 28 and 13, it says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper. Isn't that powerful? But he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Write that down. Proverbs 28 and 13. That's powerful right there, right? So concealing transgressions makes it difficult for us to prosper. And then finally, the last one is be happy. In other words, be happy to help others and then be happy when they succeed. Because a non-humble leader cannot celebrate somebody else's success. But you and I are called to be humble leaders who will celebrate the successes of others. When other people celebrate, we celebrate too. When other people succeed, we celebrate with them. We're not envious. We're not jealous. We're not covetous. We're not trying to get what they have. We're happy that they got it. They got a promotion we didn't. We're still happy. They got a new job and we didn't. We're still happy. They got a new car and we got a raggedy one. We're still happy because it is the Lord that is at work. And we trust to know that God is at work in our lives and that there is no situation that God God cannot overcome in our lives. It doesn't matter what our situation of lack or sickness or brokenness or loneliness or hopelessness. Our God is always on the case. I just came by to tell you today that there is power in humility. There is power in humility because we worship a lamb. Our leader is a lamb. Our leader is the lamb of God who's taken away the sins of the world, but not just any lamb, not just any lamb this lamb was slain for our sins this lamb was lamb was bruised for our transgressions this lamb was wounded for our iniquities this lamb was hung on a cross they hung him high and stretched him wide this lamb was slaughtered so that you and I could have our sins forgiven and I want you to know that even though that lamb was slaughtered even though that lamb was executed even though that lamb was treated terribly. That lamb is truly a king. He's not a king because he has an army. He's not a king because he has a throne. He's not a king because he has a palace. He's not a king because he's wealthy. He's not a king because he has an army or Air Force One or Cadillac One or Helicopter One. He had none of that. But what he did have is that the Lord said that he will exalt whom he will exalt and he will bring low whom he will bring low. And so if you and I want to be children of of the most high God. If you and I want to be brothers and sisters and children of God, then you and I must know that our humility is the source of our power because it is our humility that will allow us to bow down to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be all glory and majesty and dominion and power and glory and hope and love and peace and redemption and mercy and justice and righteousness and glory. Glory and glory forever.